This is from a story called The Old Man and the Dead. It brings together zombies and Papa Ernest Hemingway. You can find this story and stories about Marilyn Monroe and F. Scott Fitzgerald and Edgar Allan Poe and the robot monster in this my most recent collection called Knowing When to Die. It's not a book that will change your life, but if it sells enough, it will change mine. And because the story I'm reading is set in Spain, I am wearing my official French beret. One, an old man's luck. The dusty old man sat on the riverbank. He wore steel-rimmed spectacles. He had already traveled 12 kilometers and he was very tired. He thought it would be a while before he could go on. And that is what he told Adam Nichols. Adam Nichols told him, you have to cross the pontoon bridge, old man. He really must do that, and soon. When the shelling came, this would not be a good place to stay. The old man in the steel room spectacles thanked Adam Nichols for his concern. He was a very polite old man. The reason he had stayed behind was to take care of the animals in his village. He smiled because saying, his village made him feel good. There were three goats, two cats, and six doves. When he had no other choice and really had to leave, he opened the door to the dove's cage and let them fly. He was not too worried about the cats, not really, the old man told Adam Nichols. Cats are always all right. Cats had luck. Goats, ah, goats were another thing. Goats were a little stupid and sweet, and so they had not much luck. It was just too bad about the goats, the old man said. It was a sad thing. Adam agreed. But the old man had to move along. He really should, and the old man said thank you. He was grateful for Adam's concern, but he did not think he could go on just yet. He was very tired, and he was 76 years old. He asked the question, did Adam really think the cats would be all right? Yes, Adam said, we both know cats have luck. And Adam thought they had a lot more luck than sweet and stupid goats and 76 year old men who can go no farther than 12 kilometers when there's going to be shelling. This is part two. It's called Hunters in the Morning Fog. Miguel woke him. The sun had just come up, and there was fog with cold, puff-like clouds near to the ground. Your rifle, Miguel said. We are going hunting. Hey, Adam Nichols said. What is this? He wanted coffee, or maybe to go back to sleep. Just come, Miguel said. There were five of them. Pilar, who was as tough as any man, and Antonio, and Jordan, the American college professor, and Miguel, and Adam Nichols. They went out to the field. Yesterday it was a battlefield. The day before that it had been just a green, flat field. Some of the dead lay here and there. Not all of the dead were unmoving. Some were already up, and some were now rising though mostly properly still and dead. Those who were up staggered about like drunks. Some had their arms out in front of them, like Boris Karloff in the Frankenstein movie. They did not look frightening. They looked stupid. But they were frightening, even if they did not look frightening, because they were supposed to be dead. Say, what is this? Adam Nichols asked. His mouth was dry. It happens sometimes, Pilar said. That is what I have heard. It appears to be so, though this is the first time I personally have seen it. Pilar shrugged. The dead do not always stay dead. They come back sometimes. What they do then is quite sickening. It is revolting and disgusting. When they come back, they wish to eat living people. And if they bite you, they cause a sickness. And then you die. And then after that, you become like them. 
and you wish to eat living people. We have to shoot them. A bullet in the head, that is what stops them. It's not so bad, you know. It's not like they are really alive. I don't go for this, Adam said. Don't talk so much, Galar said. I like you very much, Americano, but don't talk so much. She put her rifle to her shoulder. It was an old 03 Springfield. It had plenty of stopping power. Pilar was a good shot. She fired, and one of the living dead went down, with the middle of his face all punched in. Come on, Pilar said, commanding. We stay together. We don't let any of these things get too close. That is what they are, things. They aren't strong, but if there are too many, then it can be trouble. I don't think I like this, Adam Nichols said. I don't think I like this at all. And I am sorry, Pilar said, but what you like and what you dislike is not all that important, if you will forgive my saying so. Then Miguel said, what does matter is that you are a good shot. You are one of our best shots. So if you please, shoot some of these unfortunate dead people. Antonio and Pilar and Jordan and Miguel and Adam Nichols shot the living dead as the hunting party walked through the puffy clouds of fog that lay on the field. Adam felt like his brain was the flywheel in a clock about to go out of control. He remembered shooting black squirrels when he was a boy. Sometimes you shot a black squirrel and it fell down. And then when you went to pick it up, it tried to bite you and you had to shoot it again or smash its head with the rock. He tried to make himself think, this is just like shooting black squirrels. He tried to make himself think it was even easier, really, because dead people moved a lot slower than black squirrels. It was hard to shoot a squirrel skittering up a tree. It was not so hard to shoot a dead man walking like a tired drunk toward you. And then Adam saw the old man who had sat by the pontoon bridge the other day the old man's steel spectacles hung from one ear. They were unshattered. He looked quite silly, like something in a Charlie Chaplin film. Much of his chest had been torn open and bones stuck out at crazy angles. There were wettish, tubular-like things wrapped about the protruding bones of his chest. He was coming at Adam Nichols like a trusting drunk who finds a friend and knows the friend will see him home. Get that one, said Jordan, the American college professor. That one, he's yours. Yes, Adam Nichols thought, the old man is mine. We have talked about goats and cats and doves. Adam Nichols sighted. He took in a breath and held it. He waited. The old man stumbled toward him. Come, old man, Adam Nichols thought. Come with your chest burst apart and your terrible appetite. Come with the brute insistence that makes you continue. Come to the bullet that will give you at least the lie of a dignified ending. Come unto me, old man, come unto me. Miguel said, you're letting him draw too close. Shoot him now. Come, old man, Adam Nichols thought. Come because I am your luck, come because I am all the luck you are ever going to have. Adam pulled the trigger. It was a fine shot. It took off the top of the old man's head. His glasses flew up and he flew back and lay on the fog heavy ground. Good shot, Jordan said. No, Adam said, just good luck.